All right, yellowtail patty fishing. Take four. <laughs> and there it is. So getting that bait out, bait out away from the boat. Fresh bait, we're bit. Away from the boat? Yeah. I gotta go left here. I'm gonna go over you. One advantage of the long rod is how easy it is to get over anglers. Up under you, under you. I can't even see my line. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, good guy. We're going. Gotta keep that fish in front of you. Okay, just pass it around, Sam. All right, thank you. Walk us through. Okay, so this fish is running up towards the bow. Which makes it a lot nicer because there's nobody up here. And it's actually already up. Um, we could use a gaff. <laughs> Color at the bow. Yeah. It's a good sized fish, too. Yeah, he was here. Got it? Gaff at the bow. Gaff at the bow. Take me a second to get him back. <laughs> Shoot, he came right in. Keegan was a good sized fish. Really? Yeah, decent. Got his head turned, that's why, huh? Look at him, he's cruising it. Something weird's going on, but we'll take it. So try and keep the head in the water. Don't lift him out. Flat along the surface so he can get a good shot at it. No? No, he's too far for me to reach. Okay. I'm kind of short for you. <laughs> we'll get him back up here for you. I got the Steven arms. Well, now he woke up. Switch spot. Once he hit that water. I can't see our line. Oh. I can't see. He's over here. Okay. Under me. So one of the things you can do is short pump, that's a little lift and just a wind. So the creaky cheeky we're gonna have to call you Hollywood cheeky now. <laughs> right, now he's coming back up. Okay. Hard to see with the step here, Tegan. Keegan. But we'll see. Oh, oh now he's pissed. <laughs> Over and under. Okay, we got color again. Gonna plane them right up to you. Oh, oh no! No way, dude! Hold on. I stuck my jacket. Right. Oh, okay. I knew something happened. There we go. <laughs> nice gaff, right in the head. Another nice slide bait, patty yellow. I think this is living. This is fishing. Welcome back guys. We are just wrapping up a two and a half day trip on the legend. Speaking of legend, we do have a legend himself here. He goes by Creaky Tiki. He's an author. He's also a seeker pro. He knew that we record and he decided that he wanted to put something together really special on how to fish kelp patties, how to choose the right rod and reel, how to retie after getting cut off, and many more little tips and tricks. He ran around with the mic, the camera, and I'm excited, I'm glad that you were able to share all the information that you did. Hello anglers, I'm Dennis Grode, also known as the Creaky Tiki, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today's equipment and some options you might not have thought about. We're out here on a two and a half day trip, and right now we're bait fishing for yellowtail. Tomorrow we may be bait fishing for bluefin. I want to talk about the rig I bring along, why I like it, and why it works. <clears throat> People look at this and say, that's too small, that's too tiny. This is an accurate Valiant 300 with twin drags, 30 pound braid, with just a short top shot, about a four foot top shot of fluoro, so straight braid to fluoro. When you think about equipment over the years, 
Reels have changed. Line has changed. What hasn't changed a lot is rods and how these rods work. People, a lot of people say the big problem fishing with straight braid is you have no stretch. So instead of using the old style fast action rod, I'm using a rod that has a lot of bend to it. And I'm gonna get in here and show. So Edward, can you get the rod there? If you, if you look at this rod, it bends all the way down to the butt. So instead of using the mono to absorb the shock, I'm using this rod to absorb the shock. Even fully loaded, it'll absorb shock. So this is called a slow action rod or a parabolic rod that bends all the way down the butt. And I'm using a nine foot rod. Two reasons. The nine foot rod gives you more shock absorbing and a nine foot rod makes it really easy to cast a bait out in the zone. Once you're hooked up, this longer rod makes it really easy to pass over anglers. And if you're up in the bow right here, with that rod bent over, I go around the anchor without having to get a deckhand assistance to get over it. So this is kind of some of the new technology. If you've ever thought about fishing straight braid, if you do it on the old style fast action rod where all the bends only in the tip, you're not gonna have any shock absorber when that fish is close to the boat. So this is a rig we're using. If we find another stop of fish here, Edward's gonna let us do some filming and hopefully we can hook one up and show you how it fights a fish. If people are lined up at the bait tank ahead of you, let them go ahead, get their bait, uh, take your turn. Over the course of a trip, it seems to all even out. So don't elbow in and push in. The people at the bait tank get it. So a couple things, lean your rod away from the bait tank so you don't hit the deckhand in the head with it. Get your bait, get it hooked, and get out of the way. Try not to hang out too long and block other people from getting their bait. And then try not to cast out in the middle of the people. All right, first thing you want to do is find a good lively bait, one that isn't all beat up. Give it a little cradle. And then I'm gonna give it what they call a butt hook. Yeah, you want the wind in your face because of that, the boat's gonna be drifting with the wind. You don't want to cast out and have the boat drift over your bait. If you're on the leeward side, you throw your bait in, the boat's gonna drift right over the bait. Turning the reel upside down when you cast helps to avoid backlashes. So with that bait away from the boat like that, it tends to not be as likely to run back under the boat. Back spool the reel to get that bait snug and tight. See if there's any biters here. Important to keep in touch with your bait. If you keep that line fairly tight and straight, you can feel what it's doing. And hopefully it's going to take off here and get a fish on it. If you aren't bit within a few minutes, usually best to change the bait. Sometimes a long soak pays off, sometimes it doesn't. So we were kind of on the downswell side and the fish were upswell. We'll hopefully get them here next stop. Do you like being the first in the water? Um, it, it's nice to be one of the first in the water, you know, because I mean there's less, less bait for those fish to pick from. So if you be in the right spot, yes, but you don't want to you don't want to be a fullback about it, you know? If you get the opportunity, first one out, yeah. And always try to cast close to where they're throwing the chum. I mean, that's where the fish are generally coming up, so the closer out of that chum, generally, the better your chances of getting bit. The goal was, was to just give a, a complete basic information guide for long-range fishing. I mean, everything from, from packing for the trip to getting home and getting the fish processed. You know, all the things that I learned on my first few trips, I tried to put in there just to basic information base for people to save them you know, having to learn it all on your first few trips. The book is the Inside Guide to Long Range Fishing. It's aimed primarily for the traditional long range trips of seven days or more, but with the bluefin fishing we have nowadays, a lot of stuff in there should be pretty applicable to that, applicable to that and cross over to that. If you'd like a copy, you can look on eBay or also Amazon. The book is available through eBay Books and Amazon Books, the Inside Guide to long range sport fishing. Do another drift here and see if we can get hooked up. Don't want to hook that bait too early because it just deadens the bait. You want to wait a little bit. I think we're about there. So when you're grabbing a bait, look for one that's lively, got all the scales intact, like this one. It's 
get out here and see if we can get hooked up. Like the captain pointed out, you don't need to throw into the kelp. Those fish circle around the kelp and then around the boat and the chum. So one of the things when your boat's moving a little bit in the wind and that bait's swimming, if you can stop that bait with your thumb, that's the bait. When you put your thumb on, if it keeps going, that's the fish. You can see my line's straight out, no belly in it. And I'm doing just a light thumb pressure on the reel, letting it go over my fingers so I can feel that bait pulling and swimming. If you look at the rod tip, with the braided line, you can actually see the action of the bait still. So this bait now is real lively. When a fish is after the bait, that bait will get really nervous and really active. You can feel it swimming hard. This one's swimming hard. So far, it's still just bait. Come on left, come on left, guys. Yeah. Come on left. Here we go, here we go. And we're on. All right, Edward, here we go. The Hercules is hooked up. Oh, we got other way. Oh, cut off. Sawed off. Uh, Sawed off. off. Yeah. Yeah. So Albert had a fish hooked up. I hooked up, and it turned out there was a couple wraps. We the baits had actually wrapped around each other, so there's a couple wraps in the line. I tried unwrapping both ways real quick. My fish was stopped. His took off and just sawed right through the spectra. So put a new leader on. We'll be fishing again. So put a little piece of floor on. I like to use the John Collins or the RP knot. Keep this. Keep the floral out of the sun. And I do an arm length plus a foot. So, John Collins or RP knot. We're braid to floral or mono. First, you take your floral mono, put a loop in it with a tag. Take the braid. Pass it up through it with a good tag. Pinch it and then start to wrap. So we go one, two, three, four, five up. And then one, two, three, four, five down. And don't worry about where they are. Moisten it up. Pull it down, and now the most important part is to pop it and set it. And then pull the tag and the two tags. And when it's tied tight, if you look closely, you can see that that spectra has actually become almost clear. See how it's a different color than the line? And that knot is set. If you do more than five turns, you stand a chance of not pulling down all the way. And when it gets wet, it'll pull through. So if you only do five turns, it's all you need. Doesn't make it any stronger to put more on it. Only disadvantage to this knot is with this little tag end. Here, you don't want to cast that through your guides because that can, that can catch on the guides. So that's why I tie about five feet for the hook. It's okay. Light line, Palomar knot. So the Palomar is a loop we have a through the eye. Overhand. So it's an overhand knot. Take the loop, go over the hook. Make sure, especially with floral, that you pull that loop back over everything. And then just pull it down. A little ring on the pliers. Cinch. Cinch. It's a double wrap around the hook, small, compact, and we're ready for Albert to sauce off again. <laughs> One other little tip if you have a hook or a jig and you want to store it, don't put it through the center of the guide. The barb on that hook can ding the ceramic. Always put it in the frame outside of the ceramic. 
so you don't scratch the ceramic with the barb of that hook putting it in and out. This time for sure, Ed. This time for sure. So you can see the lineup at the bait tank here. Get a, can you get a shot of that, Ed? <laughs> Seven, here we go. Albert, stay away from Creaky. <laughs> All right, leave it in the water. All right, we are on here, Edward. We are on. Under there. Ah, uh, we're still wrapped. Go the other way. Are we good? Okay. Got unwrapped that time. There we go. Fish, come by. You got it, go ahead. Want to keep it right in front of you. This fish is moving up towards the bow, so we're headed up that way. Finally, Ed. Did he spit it? No, he's there. Swam to the boat. This fish is charging the boat for some reason. So when the fish is taking line, let it run. Keep it right in front. We got to go down. Coming down. Rail, 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 rail. Got to go by, guys. Got to go by. So as you can see what we did there, that fish went under the boat, it's already here on the other side. We got around. <laughs> if you look at this slow action rod, the parabolic rod, you can see it give with every tail beat of the fish, every movement of the fish. Straight braid, that's a shock absorber. <laughs> Slide right, guys, if you can, please. Keep going right. So it's a slow lift up, quick wind down. Slow lift up, quick wind down. Always keeping bend in the rod. Don't give it slack. <laughs> Slow lift, quick wind. You're on. <laughs> yep. This fish close, we're gonna try and get to swim out back out from under the boat. Like that. And there it is. Patty Yellowtail coming aboard. Real important. When he gaffs that fish, put your thumb on the spool, reel in neutral in case it drops off the gaff or in case it goes tight, you don't break your rod tip, or if it comes off the gaff, you don't pop the fish up. <laughs> there we are. Now we need the tag. School size yellow. We're stapling a waterproof tag on the fish. We get back to the dock. They'll sort the fish out by your tag number. That's how it's done. You got it? Everything. That was amazing. Okay. All right. That was amazing. Yeah. Tight lines. We'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>